I'd like to welcome our distinguished panelists. Paula Zahn, co-host of 13 WNET's New York City Arts. Welcome, Paula. Susan Waldman, Yankees radio commentator for WCBS. Welcome, Susan. And once again, our very own alumna, Valerie Salumbier, president and CEO of the Salumbier Group. Welcome back, Valerie. I had to find something else to do with my life. The only other thing that I knew was sports. Um, there was a little something that was going to start happening in 1987. It was going to be called WFAN. And I got to meet the man who put it together. And um, I was recommended. And I put together a tape and got, got a job. I was the first voice on the air at WFAN. Great. Thanks. Valerie? When I graduated from high school, I did not go to college. I figured I could do it my way. And I started at Time Incorporated just by chance and got a job as a receptionist. And it all started from there. And probably the most important thing that happened to me was when I began to understand that that guy's job, I could do that. And that guy's job, I could do that as well. And that's how it began. Paula. Uh, I actually uh, set off to college believing that I was going to become a professional musician. And I spent my junior year abroad working for the BBC, and I had the opportunity to work with a film crew in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And I was the one that had to have two sets of IDs, a Protestant ID and a Catholic ID, and I crossed Shankle Road. This was in the, the wake of the Mays prison riots and the aftermath of them. And I think that was the point at which I saw the, the immediacy and, and the, the power of reporting. And that's the point at which I decided to become a journalist. So after I graduated, I started in the local news trenches. My first job was in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. I was a police reporter. My Datsun B210 had a police radio in it and a scanner. <laughs> and I was the one that would dispatch myself to murders and fires and all of that and continue to do police reporting, which I'm now doing for Discovery Channel as well. Um, moved on to the San Diego uh, market and went from San Diego to Houston, to Boston, to Los Angeles. I just met. Uh, a former uh, friend of mine from the Los Angeles market who I haven't seen in 25 years. Uh, her husband was, uh, at that time, my, my boss. And then after I left uh, the Los Angeles market, I moved on to network television and ABC and, and the list then that, that you shared with the audience. It's been a journey. crazy journey. Extraordinary journey. Nothing. I don't have regrets. The only thing I regret is that I let my ex-husband talk me into selling our apartment in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I only regret that because I didn't do it myself. I'm not a big regret person. I wouldn't want to do anything over. I kind of like, you go where you go. How about anybody else? I kind of agree with that, and particularly in, a, in our profession, because um, many times you don't have a whole lot of control about where you go next. There are so many things that determine your fate, the lead-ins, lead-outs. Uh, you can be a very talented journalist and put on a great show, but you can be very compromised by things that are happening independent of your show. So I agree. I mean, I think that one of the things I hope that if you have daughters and sons that you take home to your message today is that I think failure is, uh, out of failure comes wonderful growth. And I think we all hit roadblocks in our careers and doors slam in our faces. And, and the, the trick is to take those defeats and help leverage them into something better. So when you look at any of our resumes, uh, they are not air free, they are not uh, disappointment free. And I don't think you can go back and, like you say, relitigate that stuff. Stuff happens and, and, and your strength comes from figuring out what to do. With that falling forward, wait, what is it? Falling on your face is a forward motion. Remember that. <laughs> I love that. I love it. I love it. That's and I would, I would say I have a lot of regrets, actually, different from my colleagues. And probably the real regret is not getting an education sooner. Um, I became a student at the uh, School of New Resources at the College of New Rochelle as a young adult. And it was hard. I mean, it was, I got a great education here, but it took a 
I guess it took about three years. I was working, I was supporting a husband, and it was, again, pretty tough on myself. So I would have gotten, I would have started my education sooner. Quickly, it's been 27 years of it. Um, <laughs> When you go into sports, you have to know, and I'm sorry, it hasn't changed. They don't want you there. Because there isn't one 18-year-old intern that doesn't think he knows more than Dwight. He's wrong, but, he, but they, they don't. And um, when I started, my first thing with, with the Yankees, um, I was spit at. I had my own policeman at Yankee Stadium in 1989 because I had death threats. Um, I sat in the press box in 1987 at Yankee Stadium. Nobody talked to me the whole year. Um, it was awful. They just don't, you didn't want you there. You have to know that coming in. How about you, Paula? Any experience? You know, it's, it's interesting because I came into the news business at a time where trailblazers had broken down the, the major barriers. That's not to say I didn't encounter bias along the way, but when I started in Dallas Fort Worth, that was the top 10 market, and more than half of the, the reporters on air were women. So, you know, we had come a long way from those days where news directors didn't think women would ever be taken seriously because they didn't find our voices had the right timber uh, to be taken seriously. So all of those barriers had been broken down. Uh, but I will tell you a, a funny story about what happened to me in Dallas-Fort Worth. I was covering my first big trial. And it involved uh, the very, very popular local pastor who had been accused of selling bootleg copies of Debbie Does Dallas. <laughs> now, for those of you who aren't familiar with porno, that's the gone, gone with the wind of, of porno films. But to make, to make a long story short, as part of the, uh, you know, I had to listen to the, the, the jury selection and all of that, so I was the only female reporter that was covering this trial. So there was a judge on the bench who was very famous uh, for loving to belittle women. And uh, they actually played an hour of Debbie Does Dallas in the courtroom. So can you imagine, I'm sitting watching this porn flick <laughs> in a courtroom thinking, oh my god, what will my parents think? Could they ever believe this? And um, there was a little intermission uh, about halfway through. And I remember the judge came over to me and says, so Miss Paula, are you enjoying the movie? <laughs> Anyway, uh, then I move on to my next job, and I will tell you there was a, uh, a near crisis at the San Onofre power plant, and I remember my news director looking at me, and he says, you get the job, and if you come back and you're glowing, I'll give you double time. <laughs> so no more of the gender bias. You know, basically, there were no girl stories or boy stories by the time I got to San Diego. And, you know I find it very difficult to, since I live here, and I live in an area that is heavily wooded, and I'm by myself, I find it an awful invasion of privacy, and I think they did a terrible thing. I, I, it's, if I could say it any stronger, I, I would, but um, I, I heard all about its public knowledge, and it's all that, yada, yada, yada. I think what they did was a terrible, terrible breach of privacy, and um, those people in White Plains whose house was broken into because they went and found the, to try and find the guns, uh, that's, that's the thing that I'm afraid of, that you know that someone has a gun, so you're going to go and take that gun, and it can, it's now an unregistered gun that can't be traced back to anybody. I thought it was awful. They should be ashamed of themselves. Reality, it's like reality TV. Um, I am a very strong anti-gun supporter, and my work with the police department covers this area. I do a lot of work on this um, horrible epidemic. But I will say, publishing names, what does it get? What does it get you? It got them nothing. I mean, it got them a lot of you know, anger and disappointment and so on. I, I think it was a mistake, but I understand why they did it. Mm -hmm. Paula? Well, because I spend more than half of my lives now crisscrossing the country in maximum security uh, prisons interviewing killers for my show for Discovery Channel, I have some very strong opinions which I never share publicly because I have to be able to report these things objectively. But I, I do agree with, obviously, this was a gross invasion of your privacy. No, that's pretty much, that's pretty much um, why I was in radio. Um, 
But I, I got to tell you, I'm kind of horrified at what the young women wear on the air now. Oh. I, I'm, I'm yeah. horrified at it. And, you know, that was uh, when I first started. Um, I remember um, Mr. Steinbrenner once, when I started on television, um, told me to. I had a, a pantsuit on and I was doing something, and he said, "You go back tomorrow and you wear a skirt." You were going to be a lady here. This is in the mid '80s, and I did, and it was all right. And you know, and he said, "Okay, fine." Well, I'm going to tell you another quick story. Great, unbelievable. In 1967, at the Hearst Corporation, there was a head of human resources. The head of human resources wrote a memo, typed a memo, and it said to department managers, "It has been noted that Sally Smith." has bought a pantsuit. <laughs> if she continues to wear it to the office, she needs to be told to cease and desist. We don't want to encourage other women to be wearing pantsuits. True story. Oh, that is incredible. Determination. No. Integrity. Tenacity. Oh, um, I just want to, uh, you know, I'm just going to try and sum up a little of the key words that came out today. One was, get an education. Out of failure comes growth. If you don't want to be criticized about your looks, go into radio. <laughs> <laughs> Journalism has become very blurred with opinion and journalistic coverage. It's a slippery slope we're on. Today, citizen journalists have no sense of history when reporting and fight to get the story right. We should all teach the next generation that there are no shortcuts. Go out of your way to try and help young women today and young men. You don't have to stay in a job just because it's a job. And don't let your husband sell your apartment. <laughs>